Okay, I am um, out my arm. It's Twyla from California. How are you today? I video, I made a video, I think on Monday. I don't know if I made anything beyond Monday. It's just Wednesday, so it probably didn't. So, I don't condone eating. I'm not really planning on eating no cornstarch, per se. I had some earlier. I didn't have any yesterday. I mean, some toast. I can't find my my jelly. Mm. Mm -mm. I tried to find a nice cup to drink this coffee. <coughs> but, excuse me. But all my cups, I can't find them. I mean, they're up, up on a high cabinet. High up in the cabinet. I want to address and send my apologies out for Monday. I didn't, I didn't know it was uh, Memorial um, Veterans Day. My family, especially the Davis, my daddy's side, they were very heavily into the military. I, my uncle Joe, He died years ago, but um, my mother said he was a cook in the army. During the war. I didn't know that until, cause I came home from this fancy restaurant I had ran into in Beverly Hill. And it was a black chef in there. And it was an all you can eat twelve ninety five in the Beverly Hilton Hotel, where Whitney Houston got killed. And uh, years ago in the eighties, I was out looking for a job. And I had to use the restroom, so I knew I had to get off the bus. And I knew that Robinson's Maid was coming up, and right next to it was the Hilton. I used to often stop in that Robinson's May and spray all the cologne on me and stuff. Chanel number no. five, Estee Lauder, Ajure. I used to love Ajure. I wonder if they still sell it. So anyway, I ended up in the Beverly Hilton instead of the department store. The girl told me to go down stairs to the lower level and that's where the restrooms were i saw this restaurant very fancy it was a buffet 12.99 and I, I went you know you did what i needed to do i used to um ladies room i came into the accident the lady can i see the food first for us to pay and I stayed and ate, and I'm going to tell you, they had some stuffing. I never had stuffing. Only ate dressing. <laughs> These people had stuffing. And it was delicious. 
And I went home and told my mom about it. And she said, yeah. She said, your Uncle Joe was a cook in the military. And she said, he could cook. She said, she loved when he came over and she let him cook. And she said, he um, could make bread, dressing out of white bread or stuffing. And it would be delicious, she said. So my family was heavily involved in the military on all levels. Which brings me to this statement. Uh, I lived in Riverside next to the Veterans um, Memorials, the National, they call it the National Cemetery here in California. It's one of the few veteran cemeteries. My aunt died. She was married to a veteran. She was 90, in her 95th year of life. She died. They buried her there uh, as a veteran spouse. And so many other relatives. I had a cousin died at 70. And she wanted to die at 70. I don't know what that was about. Told her kids she didn't want to live past 70. A lot of her brothers and sisters had died. And so, I don't know. But she died. They buried her there. Her husband was in the military. Um, who else? A lot of my cousins were veterans. John. Mm-hmm. My other cousins, so many cousins. Philip, oh, in Norway, I want to say, are on here. This in the military. I totally forgot. And usually around Veterans Day when it's coming, you get all these commercial Veterans Day sale, this and you know it's coming. And I knew it was coming. But then I forgot that day and so stressed out about this election. And uh, we getting ready to be Russia. If uh, they can't stop this man. So anyways. Um, so that's that on that. Oh, hold on. Then my other cousin Roy. He's buried in the National Cemetery. So anyway I was living in Riverside. Y'all. That's why I tell you I had them two houses. I moved twice. And I stayed there a whole year. In this one gated community. You have to be over 50 to live there. And so, so I had to drive every day past my relatives buried in this cemetery. It was depressing. I, I knew I couldn't stay there long. The first house... We got a, um, what's that? Month to month lease. This coffee is good. The second house, we signed a year lease. But the God showed me how to get out of the year lease. Tell you, God is good. Because my husband started working in this city and we were commuting and, and it was just a lot. We spent a lot on gas and stuff. Ah, so anyway, this thing is moving. So we had to get out of that house and I just, it was hard passing by my deceased relatives it was it was hard every day two and three times a day
And then the second house we moved to, we got a house on a hill. And the view, they, the people that, oh, please turn this off, it's hot. The people that um, uh, rented the place was, I said, that's the cemetery, isn't it? It was a beautiful blue view, though. Beautiful. And then it's a city called Moreno Valley next to Riverside, and it has a mountain with a big M on it, and that lights up sometimes. And, uh, And he said, no, that's not the cemetery. I said, no, I said, I think that's the, that's the cemetery. I'm not no dummy. But it wasn't just the cemetery view. It was a view of everything. But it's like you had to look over that cemetery to see the rest of the view. So, Miss Yolanda Vick, I want to say, so I address that, that's the veterans issue. So, I'm glad we moved out of that area because it was hard. And I moved in, we moved there in May. And we buried my aunt in that cemetery in March. She was a smart lady. I learned a lot from her. Anyway, she lived in L.A. all her life. She was in a movie called, what was that movie, Errol? Uh, Green Pastures. Called Green Pastures. It's an old, it's a, it's a, I have to do it because I, later, it's a movie called Green Pastures and my aunt, my young aunt, before I was born, and she was born in, what, the 20s, maybe? This movie came out. It was an all-black cast. It's called Green Pastures. And it was about Jesus, about God being black. And, and it was a musical. And all of the people, that most of the characters, or not all of them, were black. And my aunt played in this movie. And she was, like, in one of the two first scenes of the movie as a little girl. And she was so cute. And the story behind that movie was, I don't want to make this a long video, but she said it was, it was, you know, they was having, I think it was during the depression. I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was around that in the 30s. So, yeah. So, she was like eight. She was born, I know, kind of in the late 20s, I think. 27. Oh, she was born in 27. Okay. And my husband saw that movie in England as a little boy. And then he ended up being married to her niece. So anyway, my aunt was in the first two scenes. She is so cute. If you ever see that movie or look it up, and I, it should be on YouTube, you'll see my aunt Lillian as a girl. <laughs> she was so cute. So she had a speaking scene. At, at, and yeah, I think, yeah, she was in the first scene. She was running down the street. She came in the house. I think she was in the mirror. Then they showed her at school. And she looked the same throughout her whole life. And she was a person, she never like just um, bask or try to, she thought she was so pretty or whatever. She, she was just a very beautiful woman. And in her 90s, she didn't even have a double chin. So anyway, she played in that movie. And um, she made some good decisions in her life. And she made some bad, bad ones, but she made some good ones. One was she sold my grandmother's house to my uh, first cousin. And she took the money and she moved to Orange County, Garden Grove. And um, so that made her pretty well off financially. So enough of that. I don't want to make this too long. I think I'll go to 15 minutes. But my uh, husband saw that movie when he was a kid. And then we went to her 80th party and my uh, my second cousin, her granddaughter, had all this movie paraphernalia around. 
and my husband remembered the movie. And he said, oh my God, your auntie was in there. He said, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. he was talking to her about it and she was so happy. And uh, so yeah, but that cemetery living next to, yeah. I don't know how people have been able, you know, traditionally people have buried people like in the backyard and all of that. But I guess we just so far removed from that. I don't even like driving by a cemetery or even a mortuary. So anyway, I'm coming back with part two. I want to address, address Yolanda Vick. How you doing?